Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm so glad you could stop by and visit with me today. I have a birthday card for you and a technique. Uh, it's I'm taking another little bit of a break for from Christmas cards and I'll get back to them here soon. Um, and I have a, a technique that I'm using on watercolor paper and it's using our new Delicata Gold uh, Reinker and some of the um, various inks for fall colors. I think you'll like it. Let's just get started. Okay, here is my card and it is one that sits on a back and this is the only part that opens. And um, this is paper that I have made with our watercolor papers and I'm going to show you I'm changing up my colors a little bit today so the pieces that you'll need to make this card are a piece of black basic black that is a quarter of a sheet of eight and a half by eleven so it's four and a quarter by five and a half then I have a layering piece here of Mango Melody that is cut four by five and a quarter. Then I have another piece of black that is cut six inches by five inches. And then it is scored at two and a quarter. And that's the piece that folds over and sits on the front of our card. And then I have another piece of Mango Melody that is um, three and a half by four and five eighths and that's going to sit on the inside of our card. Then we are going to make a piece of watercolor paper and I'll just bring this up so you can see it and I hope you can see all the sparkles in that. I'm going to show you how to make this watercolor paper and this piece is two inches by four and three quarters inches. On a piece of our watercolor paper, uh, this measures six inches by, by five inches. So when you make up one of these, you have enough for two card fronts here on the edge, and then you'll have a piece left over. And what I did was I cut out some leaf elements to finish decorating the card. And in this case, I embossed a piece in gold, and you can certainly do that. Um, but this time, I think I'm going to use some leaves that I've cut out. So the die sets that I'm using is this little die from our stitched label die set. And then I'm using these three dies from our seasonal layers die set. And uh, I have cut a couple of those out. So you need a piece of scrap of the black and in this case the Mango Melody. On this one I used Grapefruit Grove and I've started another one that I'm making the back instead of black. I've started it in um, Pretty Peacock and I'll I'll show you that when it's not finished, but um, I thought I'd come on and share with you kind of where I was. Okay, so I have cut out, because I haven't decided whether I want this piece that goes on the front of this to be the uh, Mango Melody or to um, ink up this one in very vanilla. So I've cut one of each and we'll have to make up our minds what, which one we're going to do. And then I used my two inch circle punch. So you need um, a piece of scrap of either the very vanilla or the um, um, color you're using here. In this case it was Grapefruit Grove. In this case it's Mango Melody. And on this, this one I used very vanilla and then I put some color over it. So that's what you need to make this card. Now, what I'm going to spend some time doing is showing you, I'm going to bring out my work. This is the backing paper that sometimes comes like on the foil papers. And I save these because they make great little surfaces to work on when I do my card classes. 
um, and we're doing a technique like this, I give everybody one of these backs and they make their mess on this and then it's real easy to clean up. So um, that's uh, what I'm using here to, to make my um, make my piece of watercolor. Then I have the largest of my blocks. This one is a block F. And I'm using that. And on this one, I used um, Melon Mambo, and I used Flirty Flamingo, and I used Grapefruit Grove, um, and I used um, not crushed curry, but so saffron. Um, and I used lots of different colors. On the one that we're making today, um, I have used um, Old Olive and um, Poppy Parade, uh, Pumpkin Pie, Crushed Curry, and I think that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is show you what I did to color my paper. So here is my watercolor paper. And here are some of my inks. I know I want to use Mango Melody. Um, that's one of the colors that I used. And what I'm going to do is just put some Mango Melody right here on that block. And then I'm going to set this aside. And then I'm going to put, and I tried the reds, I tried Lovely Lipstick, and the one I liked the best was Poppy Parade. It's the one that comes out most um, clearly. So I'm putting some Poppy Parade on there. Then I'm going to take my Pumpkin Pie and I'm going to put my pumpkin pie right up here on the top. And then I'm going to put some of my old olive right down here. And then I'm using my water pen and I'm going to drop a little bit of ink in the center of each of those, or water, I mean, in the center of each of these colors. And um, then I've got off, off um, camera here just a little baby wipe that I clean off my tip with. Okay, so what I'm doing is just picking up that color of the green and I'm starting in the corner and just giving it a good watercolor wash. And I don't like how light that is. I want it very intense. So I'm going to pick up some more of that green right from the, from the pad. And if you can't get the right saturation, then uh, I also keep my reinkers handy and I will drop a, a little dab of reinker on here to give me the saturation of the color that I want. Okay, so let's see here. There, that is more like it. Nice and dark green. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to clean off my brush run a little bit of water. One of the things that I do, um, I mentioned it in other ones, is I went to like a Sally Beauty and I got one of these bottles that's got a needle nose tip on it. I actually got two of them. Um, and this one, large one, I fill with water because I frequently need water at my desk, craft table. And I hate just having to stop everything and get up and go to the sink. So I have this with water so that I've got it handy. And this one is filled with alcohol. And so I can do lots of things right, uh, right where I need to without having to get up and run around. Okay, so next I'm going to do Poppy Parade here. Isn't that nice and vibrant? I just love how, how 
just sparkly that color is. It's wonderful. And so I'm going to get some Poppy Parade down and then I'm going to clean off my brush again. And I'm going to go to maybe this mango melody here because I want um, I want contrast on my colors. Okay, and then this last one is pumpkin pie. And let's see, it's a nice orange. And these colors kind of remind me a little bit of the fall colors. In Colorado, we have such a, a, a drop in temperature where it froze. We lost all of our leaves overnight, so we missed the colors this year. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So I'm going to rinse this off again, and I'm going to go back to my green and get some green on here. Now, when this is done, it's going to need to um, dry. And I've already prepared a couple of sheets so that we can just keep going. But it doesn't take very long, and you can also use your heat tool to speed this process up a bit. And then back to my Poppy Parade. And like I said, I love the intensity of that, that color. And if it's not intense enough for you, like I say, drop some, some uh, drops from your, um, from your reinker, and get get it covered. Now back to the mango, which I'm just going to finish off with here. Okay. Now, what I did next was. Um, now you can keep going and make several of these sheets, which is what I did. And I made them in different color combinations. Now I'm just going to clean off my block and I'm going to show you what I did next. And then I'll show you some of the finished pieces. I took, we have these back in stock. This is the Delicata Golden Glitz. And so I'm going to put a little bit of that Delicata Gold on there. And I'm going to add some drops of water to it. And I'm going to just move that around. And then I am going to go over all of my colors. And I'm going to add that beautiful gold color on the top of my ink colors here. And look at how pretty that is. It gives you so much sparkle. And it mutes the colors just a little. And for authenticity, you could go back over this, and I've done this on a couple of them, and I added a tiny bit of watered down soft suede to give some brown, because you know leaves have all of these colors in them, including some of the brown as the leaves begin to dry. And so here we go. I'm just about done here. And there we have our watercolor paper just as gold glittery as it can be. And that was just a drop or two of the Golden Glitz um, reinker, And it gave me full coverage on that piece of paper. And you can see here, this is the piece that I made from before. And I'm going to show you the pieces that I made. I made this one, which is similar to this, but it's got green um, in if the stripes are a little bit smaller and they don't have to be stripes 
you can just put down blobs of color so that you can have everything all over the place. But this is one I've made. I'm going to set this one aside to dry. Then, um, let's see. Um, I made uh, this one, which is quite similar to this. It's got a little bit more yellows in it, and this has a little bit more of the poppy parade. Then I have little bits and pieces of this one that I have left where I added some um, pretty peacock to, to, the, uh, to the card to give it a different kind of look. And this is what it looks like with the pretty peacock. Um, and then I used Grapefruit Grove with that, and I haven't finished that one yet. But I did want to show you, it doesn't have to be black in the back. It could be red. You could do this as a Christmas card. If you did greens and reds and golds and, you know, different colors like you would for Christmas, then I think you could get some very interesting things going. But this is exactly that same layout, but done with um, this paper. And I used Granny Apple Green on this. I continued with the Poppy Parade. I used the Mango Melody, or the Crushed Curry, I think. And... I think it was pumpkin pie. And so um, these are some of the ones that I've made. And there's another one. Let me see if I can lay my hands on it. And this is all I have left of it. And this was the piece that I made originally uh, to do this card. And this piece has uh, melon mambos and greens and yellows in it. And you can see just how pretty that is. And I didn't put nearly as much gold on this one, um, but I'm learning as I go here and trying to save you a little bit of time by doing the experimenting uh, for you. But I just love this color combination as well. But this is the one we're going to work with today. So now you know how to make your paper. And then what I have done is I went and cut a bunch of the leaves with those dies that I showed earlier. And so I've got little leaves in lots of different colors and different intensities. And I've got some of these leaf pieces and this couple of these have some of that uh, blue in it from the um, pretty peacock. And then I also cut some leaves out of designer series paper. In the Sea Silhouette, on the back of the big flowers, is this incredibly beautiful paper that looks like this. And you can cut some of the leaves from the back of that, um, and it looks like some of this paper that we've been making. Now this one, I put uh, gold embossing on, or I used the gold ink on the leaf here, and then have that. So we have lots and lots of choices here to decide how to decorate our card. So let's get going here. And the objective really was to show you how to get that done. So I have a base all put together with all of those pieces, the black, and then the mango melody, and then black mango melody in this. And this piece is, in fact, I had started to put it on and changed my mind, decided to do this video so I could share this whole process with you. And this is going to go right on the front of my card. And again, this is cut two by four and three quarters. If you've cut a two inch black piece with uh, the circle punch. And then it's a matter of what we want to finish decorating this card with. And we can put this Mango Melody piece on here, or we can put this piece. And I'm really tempted to leave the Mango Melody there and go back to the sort of what's left on this gold paint and just color or get some gold 
on the surface of this mango melody. I think I like that. So that's what I've done then. Just put a little bit of that gold, uh, gold glitz paint with my watercolor brush. That makes this a little damp. So I'm going to glue this down and let it sit for a second while we, while we do a couple of other things. Out my silicone mat, and that's not good. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down because this is just cardstock, it's not any of our paper. Although you could cut a circle or cut this die out of a piece of this paper. And like I said, I've done all different kinds I did light ones, pastel ones. I've just done all kinds of crazy things with them, and it's been fun to mess with, I'll tell you. So if we use this as our piece that goes on the front of our card here, then it's a matter of picking. Now see, that one is a very light one and does show some contrast. If we use that on the front here and then put one that has a bit more color maybe one of these with a little bit more intense color down here on the bottom. Maybe we'll just do that. This is just going to be a very colorful project. But I just love it. So pretty. Okay, and then this one I did raise up on dimensionals. And that is cut out of the watercolor paper, so it's really stiff. So I feel real comfortable with that hanging off the edge there. Then I'm going to also raise this one on dimensionals, but not before I do my stamping. Okay, so my stamp that I decided to use on this one is the same one that I used here. And it is Birthday Wishes. And it is from the Butterfly Wishes stamp set. So there it is, Birthday Wishes. And I like the size of it. It absolutely fit on here. And I think in keeping with the black accents, I'm going to use my Memento here. And first I'm going to put my gold paint down on my piece. Because I think the water will move the memento around and get my um, uh, piece of paper um, muddy. So we're going to do this and then put some snail on here and put that piece down and let that dry for just a second. All right, I'm going to move some of these things out of the way. There we go. We have our birthday wishes, nice and sparkly. And I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals to the back of my circle. And there we have our pretty birthday wishes card. And I really am pleased with this. I like both of the color combinations. So that is the project for today. I, I hope you like this. Um, and uh, it's a really simple card to put together. And there is no reason that you couldn't put a squarish piece across the front here and put a Happy Thanksgiving on this one. The colors, you can make it be whatever you want. It could be spring colors, it could be fall and winter colors, it could be blues it, uh, and turn it into a, a winter Christmas card. It could be any number of things. I think it's just lovely. And it could be anything. I needed a birthday card, so that's what I made mine. And I have put on here 
some of the embellishments from the um, from the from the gold enamel dots. And so I've got some of those here, and it does just dress up the card a bit. And you can put as much decoration or as little on this as you'd like. I might just add that one, just to give it a little bit more oomph. <laughs> there we go that's the project for today thank you so much for stopping by my youtube channel today i do so appreciate it and if you don't already have a stampin up demonstrator i'd love to be your demonstrator and or you could join my team uh, would be lovely to have you on my team um, let's see this will air in november and so I haven't picked a prize draw for the month of November, but it might just be the um, rose bundle um, and some of the paper. If I did the rose bundle, that's what I'll do, the rose bundle and a package of the paper. And uh, so uh, the Christmas rose Christmas time is here, and we'll make that be the drawing for the month of November. So again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye! Bye.